Blessings everyone, this is Reverend Afrin with the Four Pillars Shrine. I would like to do a video today about Wiccan ritual tools. Um, now I'm going to have several different tools I'm going to talk about and I'm going to show you each of the tools that I have and I'm going to show you um, you know, what they do and talk a little bit about what they're for. Now a lot of uh, manuals on Wiccan practice only discuss maybe the um, the <clears throat> physical uses of the tools as opposed to the spiritual or the energetic uses of the tools. So I'd like to discuss those um, and first we're going to talk about the four main elemental tools and then we're going to go on and talk about some other altar um, tools as well. Um, now there are a lot of different tools used for magic and we're not really going to discuss those. Of course candles, um, stones, herbs, incense, things like that, we're not really going to discuss because those are sort of outside of this video. Um, but we're going to talk about ritual tools and um, for those of us who already know about them, it's a refresher. And for those of, us, those of us who are seeking, I think this will be a good video to really give you a basic idea about a lot of the different tools. So the first um, of the <clears throat> main ritual tools is um, the wand. And here's my wand. You can see um, that's my wand. It's nothing too fancy, but that's my wand. So <clears throat> the wand, the ritual tool, uh, the wand is used primarily for calling the quarters during Wiccan ritual. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, what that is, um, I might make another video about about that. Um, but for now, um, I understand that this is used primarily for um, calling the quarters. Now. As I'm telling you this, each tradition is really different, and each tradition might have more or less tools that they use. Um, <clears throat> and some tools are used more than others. In the Karelian nativist tradition, the wand is used predominantly for calling the quarters. Now in other traditions, the wand might be used for um, casting the circle as well as calling the quarters, and for some other things as well. Um, in the Karelian tradition though, this one is used predominantly um, for calling the quarters and invoking the energies for each of the quarters. Um, again, there's my wand. The wand is also the element of air. Um, in some traditions, it's the element of fire. Um, in the Karelian tradition, it is the element of fire. Um, the second ritual tool is the athame. This is my athame right here. It's a pretty big one. Um, and the athame is a ritual knife and it's used predominantly for casting the circle. Um, other traditions do things differently, have different um, different things that they do. Um, in the Karelian tradition, the athame is used to um, um, cast the magic circle and um, it is the element of air. In other traditions, it's the element of fire and it is used um, more so more than the others. In the um, Karelian tradition, it is used, I think, pretty equally compared to the other ones. However, in other uh, traditions of Wicca, like maybe CX Wicca or Gardnerian Wicca, um, the athame would be the predominant ritual tool that would be used for most things in the ritual um, in terms of directing energy or cutting the circle and things of that nature. So, <clears throat> Some traditions give more or less reliance upon this one. Some traditions will allow the wand to be used in the same way that the athame is used, um, and then they just omit the wand altogether. Um, it really just depends. Now, when um, using the wand, the wand is used as an extension of the arm, and it is used as a way to direct energies. It's used specifically as a way to direct energies. You're taking the energies through you, you're directing them to your goal, whatever that goal happens to be, um, in terms of casting the circle or calling the quarters or whatever the case is, depending on your tradition. The athame is very similar. However, the athame is used to cut. It could be used to sever um, energetic bonds, it can be used to cut out a magical circle, it could be used to cut a door so that those can enter and exit. <clears throat> so it's predominantly used um, to cut. It's also used to direct energy, but it's used more to cut, to slice. Um, the athame should never be used for physical harm. It should never be used for um, physical bloodletting of any sort. A lot of traditions, and I also agree, that if blood touches the blade of the athame, it is no longer usable. It's Inusable. Um, this one was actually made by someone, you can tell. Um, so the 
altar pentacle is placed upon the altar at the center of the altar and it's used predominantly for um consecrations so if you're consecrating something or asking for a blessing upon something you might place it upon the altar pentacle on the altar now other um <clears throat> teachers will say that the altar pentacle is also used for grounding the altar pentacle is the element of earth so it is a grounding principle so when you put it upon the altar it sort of grounds all those stray energies it acts as almost like an anchor that holds the circle down holds the circle in place and brings a center to the circle a sort of um, grounded center to the circle so you have the altar pentacle um, I, I, some teachers will also say that the altar pentacle is used for sort of gathering up the energies gathering the energies and kind of focusing the energies to a central location in the circle and again, the altar pentacle is the element of earth. Um, and then finally, the last of the four um, ritual tools is the chalice. Now, I have a lot of different chalices I'm going to show you. So, of course, I have a drinking horn here. This is a drinking horn, cow's horn. It's a real one. Um, and this is just a stylized chalice, um, depending on your tradition, your whatever. Um, here's just a plain glass one. This one was my grandmother's, and she's passed away, so it's kind of like a um, keepsake for me as well. And then I also have this one, which was given as a gift. Kind of scary. Look, ooh, scary. It's not like it because this comes out. Cool. You can wash it, clean it, you know. Um, and then I have this one, which was given to me. Um, shortly after I began my Wiccan practice, um, it's old and tarnished, as you can see, and I've tried everything to get the tarnish off, but so I don't use this one much anymore, but this one was given to me um, by a friend, so I really enjoy that one. Um, now, the chalice is used predominantly for making libation, and a libation is a liquid offering. Um, if you were doing ritual outdoors, you would just pour the libation onto the ground, but because you're doing... Um, <clears throat> you're doing it indoors you would you know you could potentially keep it inside there um, so the um, chalice is used to collect energies from the divine especially when you're performing a blessing upon the chalice so it kind of collects it and um, uses it um, as a sort of a centralized collected um, focus, which you can use, of course, for dispersing uh, blessings through partaking of the ritual chalice. Um, that's the predominant use of the chalice, and the chalice, of course, is the element of water. So, um, again, um, the um, athame is the element of air, or sometimes fire, depending on the tradition. The wand is the element of fire, sometimes air, depending on the tradition. The altar pentacle is the element of earth, and the chalice is the element of water. So those are the four basic ritual tools that are used in Wiccan ritual. Um, those are used for, you know, serious ritual, or if you're doing magic or something, or if you're just doing an espot or saba, those are going to be used for anything. Um, so uh, those are the four basic.